So the importance of pavilions in my career has been like um, they they become more like these experimentation labs that allow us to think about uh, specific ideas that we could not develop in more permanent or larger structures. And you know, when you have to spend a lot of money or a lot of time in buildings, people are less willing to experiment uh, than when you have uh, smaller and more specific things like this, this kind of experiments. In a recent interview, I mentioned that maybe like a skyscraper or a big commission was not as important to me as some of these experiments. And I think it's because um, I think public spaces actually have a lot of layers to it, probably more than some of the larger uh, buildings that are more than contained into themselves and less porous into a conversation with, with other people. So that's why I, fi I find more interesting to do this kind of, of projects than maybe like having um, a private commission. We're always asked how the Mexican context is perceived in this kind of experiments or, or these pavilions that are installed outside Mexico City. Um, and I do believe that Mexican architecture is uh, an architecture of layering, you know, like we have the uh, pre-colonial architecture and then the colonial, so it's about the overlaps and how uh, each layer transforms and translates into the other. So when you do this in a different context, it just keeps adding layers to it. So it's not about having Mexican architecture in England, but it's maybe having like this new layer to how we understand space in general. It appears to be very simple. It's just a rectangle, a very simple rectangle. But once you come inside, it becomes quite complex. There's a series of smaller courtyards, the reflection of the um, curved mirrored surface, the, um, uh, the shallow pool, all these fragments of spaces that really like become one single uh, object. But you cannot perceive it as a single object. It's just like these tiny moments that are activated in many different ways. Uh, for example, the, the shallow pool can be drained, so if a program expands, actually the space expands, so it becomes more like a shoreline of activation. And then you have like these two smaller quarters on, on the, each side of the pavilion, which act like the backstage, so the pavilion actually becomes a theater. It's a performative space, that you have a back house and then a, a frontal stage. So it's very fragmented, but at the same time it's very, very simple in its geometry and its materials. What does this pavilion mean for Mexican architecture and in a global context? Um, I really liked what Hans Ulrich mentioned a little bit earlier today. It's not about like global architecture, but more about this idea of mundialité, you know, like this, this idea that is um, something not, not is just regional, but it's informed also by the, um, the place where it's uh, positioned. So maybe this is another way of understanding architecture. This is not just Mexican architecture installed in London, but it's also an architecture that is informed by these two geographies. No, I'm a Mexican architect, and of course that is going to be perceived in the pavilion, but it is deeply informed by its context, its size, its temporality. So I think it's a mix of both. So where do I want this pavilion to go next? I would say like anywhere in the world, as long as it is in a public pavilion, that would be my, my, my biggest hope for it to be activated by the public.